Hello and welcome to this tutorial about QBasic programming. This is a beginner's tutorial so no previous experience is expected. Um, I'm using DOSBox here but you can use a standard DOS computer if you want. Okay, these, what I'm about to type in here are just DOS commands for loading QBasic in my case. Uh, CD, QBasic, uh, QBasic. Um, now we'll start off by writing the Hello World program. Print is the keyword, and then the quotation mark is the delimiter. Uh, hello World, end quote. So Hello World will appear on the screen when we run this program. Press F5 to run it, and there it is, hello world. Uh, now, um, here's a calculator program. Uh, no. Uh, at the top, there's um, clear screen keyword, um, and then uh, print keyword with a calculator appearing on the screen. That's the title of the program. Um, I put that there so that people would know what the, you know the user would know um, what the program was uh, used for. Now, dim num one is single. Um, that's a, a floating point number um, because uh, the calculations. Um, it would be nice to have floating points for the calculations. Um, and then number two, so num one is the the first number in the calculation. Num two is the second. Um, now here's a, here's a uh, do loop. Um, everything inside the the indentation here is um, to be looped until um, the rep string does not equal. Oh, while yeah, when when it equals n, then uh, the loop will stop. Um, so it says while REP does not equal N, uh, it does this stuff. Um, so input here. Oh, and by the way, this uh, string here is it's a. Whenever you use a variable that has a dollar sign on the end, it's a string. Strings are just um, characters, basically. Um, there's input here. Input first number, uh, and they type in the. Uh, the first number for the arithmetic, then they put in the operator, um, and then they put in the second number, and th down here, this these are um, uh, conditional statements. So if operator is uh, plus, then print onto the screen their first number plus their second number. So it shows the result of the calculation um, with this uh, uh, line here. Um, and the other three lines do pretty much the same thing. Now with these input um, statements here, what that does is it, um, it puts a prompt onto the screen and then they type in data to be used by the program. Um, but at the end here, all this does is uh, ask them whether or not they want to do another calculation. So I said again, yes or no, uh, question mark, and REP, uh, dollar sign, you know, REP for repeat. Um, repeat is uh, uppercase of repeat. Th this um, uppercase dollar signs with uh, the thing in parenthesis after it, it, what it does is it makes uh, whatever's in parenthesis uppercase. So that means that there can be only, there can be one single uh, condition here for the while loop, um, and that's an uppercase n. So if they put in low, lowercase n, it'll convert it to uppercase n. <coughs> um, and uh, then it loops, could go on for a long time until they put in N for the, for this um, question here. So we'll go ahead and run it, F5, enter first number 2, plus 2, 
should equal 4, yes. Uh, 23 divided by 3 is 7.66 uh, repeater. Uh, now, yes. Uh, 55,000 times 55,000 is that. Now, that little, uh, um, those characters in there, those letters, that's um, scientific notation. So, you move the decimal point by, you know, nine times to the to the right there. Anyway, I put in no. Um, open. Yes. Um, okay, so this is a guessing game program. At the top it clears the screen like the last program, puts the name on the screen, and then it, in, it sets itself up by asking for a, a range for the um, magic number to possibly be in. And then there's a randomization line. X has, now with variables, just think of them as places where data can be put as opposed to a constant or something like that. So X has a random number put into it that's that's um, somewhere in the range, plus one. Uh, the number of guesses is set to, to zero. Uh, it does this uh, section here in the indentation while their guess does not equal the random, the uh, the magic number. So it inputs their guess here and they type in their guess into the variable. Uh, number of guesses equals number of guesses plus one. So it keeps track of how many numbers they've used it and how many times the loop is repeated. Uh, if uh, their guess is less than X, then print it is greater onto the screen. If their guess is greater than X, then print it is less. Um, uh, and it just loops until they get the right number and, and then down the bottom here this is where the control of the program gets moved to. It goes, you know, top to bottom. Um, so print is the next thing that'll be executed. Um, print, you got it in however number, min however many guesses uh, they used tries. So we'll go ahead and run this. Uh, Ten. Five, seven. Okay, I got it in two tries. Run it again. Try 100, 50, 25, 12, 5, 9, 11, 10. Okay, so it seems to be working. Um. Now go on to the next program. Uh, open running average. Um, now running average. This what it does is it it um, combines numbers that they put in and keeps track of how many numbers there are, and then it divides as as and it shows the result of a division of the total of their numbers divided by how many numbers that they've put in if that makes any sense. Um, but at the top there's a clear screen. It prints running average onto the screen here. Some variables are declared using dim. Uh, a couple of long, long fixed point numbers. Uh, uh, and uh, A and X are single floating point numbers. And here's a do loop. While uh, n is greater than or equal uh, to zero because down here on the next line you can see that if they put in minus one the program is meant to stop so that's why there's that condition after the while, the while uh, statement um, so they put in there's an input for the number 
for whatever number they want to add to the to the average, and that goes into n. Uh, and then uh, count has the count of how many numbers there are has one added to it for every time this repeats. And then x, the total has their number added to it. And then a the uh, answer equals the total divided by how many numbers there were, the count of how many numbers, and that prints A onto the screen. And then it just loops. <coughs> so, we'll go ahead and run it. Um, 10, 20, uh, 0, should go back to 10, uh, and 0 again, 7.5. Minus one to stop. All right, might run it again. Uh, Nineteen ninety-nine. The year nineteen ninety-nine, two thousand and seven. Uh, and this year two thousand and twelve. And the average of those is uh, two thousand and six. So minus one. open. Okay, the last program here is a unit converter. It converts Fahrenheit to Celsius and Celsius to Fahrenheit. At the top here there's the clear screen, then it prints the name on the screen, then there's the de declaration of the, uh, the unit, which is the measure of what the temperature was, and then there's um, X and Y for the answers of the, of the uh, formulas. Um, so, here at the top there's that, uh, an input for Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit um, and then uh, so they can use upper or lower case in the C string because it gets converted uppercase anyway. Um, and then uh, there's an input for the unit so that's basically the temperature that they're trying to convert and then there's a a formula, textbook formula for converting um, to c Celsius and to Fahrenheit for Y and then um, if c uh, the conversion was to Fahren was from Fahrenheit it prints Celsius on the screen and if it's from Celsius it prints Fahrenheit on the screen. So we'll uh, run it. Uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius, 100 degrees, uh, 37.7 repeater or thereabouts. Um, run it again. Uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit, 23 is 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit. This book might be helpful for those wanting to learn how to program in QBasic. It's called using QBasic by Phil Feldman and Tom Rugg. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching. Bye.